Good morning, everyone. Hello. Welcome. Let me know, please, if you can hear me all right. Good morning. I can hear you. Good morning, Claudia, Chris, Daniela, Fernanda. Good morning, Jamilka. Good morning. Ben. Good morning. Okay, I want to get right into it, guys. Um, I want to review a little bit again what we talked about yesterday uh, to make sure there are no questions about what we need to be thinking about when we develop our paragraph. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And uh, you should be able to see now the instructions for this task so far in the wiki. OK, so we again, we started off creating a topic. We now have a context measurements and references according to APA. Yesterday I went in and left some comments so we can uh, clarify some questions that you have about APA if you have some doubts. And on on the 15th, we looked at evidence. All right, so you were asked to create two sentences as evidence sentences indicating which of the question words they apply to. Yesterday, we started drafting our paragraph. So our paragraph needs to consist of the following. It should begin with the topic sentence. OK, remember that the topic sentence is the main idea for the entire paragraph. The evidence sentences you should be able to take from this exercise that you did earlier, right? You should have at least two evidence sentences. So you can use those sentences in your paragraph. Number three, we also need to include what's called explanation sentences or analysis sentences. All right, so these are different than evidence sentences. Evidence sentences are going to include citations. All right, they're going to be, it's going to be information coming from an outside source. It's, it's not going to be your original idea. It's going to be you paraphrasing what someone else has said as it relates to the topic sentence. Now your explanation sentences or your analysis sentences, these are going to be where you're commenting on how the evidence sentences relates to the topic sentence. All right, so these are going to be in your own words and where you're linking you, the details, the examples, the statistics that you include, how those relate to the main idea of your of your paragraph. All right, so that's another type of sentence. And then you're going to have a fourth type of sentence that's going to occur at the very end of your paragraph that's basically going to summarize or conclude the paragraph. All right, so think about your paragraph that you're developing that you started yesterday that we're going to work on today as well. Think about this paragraph as having four types of sentences. Number one, topic sentence. Number two, evidence sentences. Number three, explanation types of sentences. And number four, a closing or a concluding or summarizing sentence. OK, so think of each sentence is functioning as one of these four types. Now, yesterday, we looked at some examples. I think we we're having problems sharing my screen. Now it seems like I'm able to do that. So let me show you again here what we were talking about yesterday. Now, remember that each sentence could be one of four types, main idea, evidence, analyze, or summary, or link. So in these examples that we looked at yesterday, we looked at five different examples. Some of these examples are better than others. The first example, imagine we have a paragraph with six sentences. One, two, three, four, five, six sentences. We have a sentence that's functioning as the main idea. We have two sentences that are functioning as the evidence. We have two sentences that are functioning as the analysis. And we have one sentence that's functioning as a summarizing sentence or a linking sentence. So in this example, 
this is the order in which the sentences are presented in the paragraph. So the first sentence is the main idea. The second is an evidence. The third sentence is an evidence. The fourth is an analysis. The fifth is another analysis sentence. And the sixth sentence is a summarizing sentence. All right. So this would be one way, one example of how you could organize the types of sentences for your paragraph. Notice that the main idea is at first, and notice that the summarizing sentence is at the end, right? It wouldn't make much sense to put the main idea in the middle of the paragraph, okay? So usually the main idea, the topic sentence occurs at the beginning of the paragraph. Now, in the second example, it's very similar, but it's, it's, a, it's a little bit different than the first in that the evidence and the analysis is organized in a different way. We have one sentence as an evidence, one sentence as an analysis, one sentence as an evidence, one sentence as an analysis, and then we have a sentence that summarizes the paragraph. Of course, we begin the paragraph always with the main idea, with the topic sentence. But this is another option that you can choose when you're deciding on how you want to organize your ideas. Now look at the third example. The, the difference here is, again, we begin with the main idea and we conclude with the summarizing sentence, but the difference here is that we have an analysis sentences before the evidence. So here we have a frown. Here we've got two smiley faces. Here we have a frown. We don't want to do this. Why? Because we want to present the evidence first. We want to present the examples the details, the statistics, and then we want to comment on those details. We want to comment on those examples, those details, those statistics, those facts. All right, so this is why this example, number three, is not recommended, right? That, that we, we want to begin right after, the right after the main idea, we want to begin right away with an evidence sentence. Now, we, we have different choices. We can talk about all the evidence first and then comment, or we can go little by little, a little bit of evidence, analyze, a little bit of evidence, analyze. Now, these last two examples also have a frown because in the fourth example, we have a lot of evidence. We have, in fact, too much evidence and not enough analysis. In the fifth example, we have not enough evidence and we have tons of analysis. So we also want to try to avoid these two scenarios. We want to have a good balance between evidence and analysis. Now, that doesn't mean that we always have to have exactly the same number of sentences, right, uh, between evidence and analysis. Now, we could easily have an example like this, where we have the main idea Evidence, 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 analyze, link, or summary. That's fine. You know, maybe that's fine, but we don't want to have a whole lot of evidence, right? And this is just to kind of give you an idea here. If we want to try to maintain a balance between evidence and analysis, or evidence and your explanation, or your commenting. Maybe say why and how, and where, and when, what is the relationship between the evidence and the main idea, we want to make sure we have good balance between those two. And that's the point I want to make when, by presenting these two examples, right? In both examples, we have too much of one and not enough of the other. All right, so this is what we talked about yesterday. I wanted to revisit this because this um, this might be something new. Maybe you haven't quite looked at a paragraph in this way before. What I'm talking about here obviously applies to any type of academic essay that you're asked to write. Right? We're only writing a paragraph right now for this activity, but use the same information when you're developing your essay in your writing class. And of course, next semester when you're in HSAE, and you're going to be writing two academic essays for there, there as well. Paragraph development is super important. 
right? Think of a, par a paragraph as a mini essay. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And so our beginning is the main idea. Our middle is the evidence and the analysis. Our end is either a summarizing sentence or if you're writing an essay, maybe a linking sentence, linking the, the present idea, the present paragraph to the next idea. Okay, so I want to revisit, I want to repeat again what we talked about yesterday uh, to, to try to clarify any doubts that you guys have about your approach, how you're thinking about developing your paragraph. Now, we're, we haven't talked about organizational patterns. That's another thing, right? How do you want to organize your ideas? The least important to the most important, chronologically, right? That's another issue. That's a different thing. What we're looking at here is how do sentence, sentences function? And it's important to mention that no one sentence should function more than one of these four things, four items. For example, you should never have a sentence that is an evidence sentence and an analysis. Don't do that. Don't have a sentence that it contains both the main idea and the evidence. We don't want to do that. We don't want to have one sentence that functions as the analysis and the summarizing sentence. No. Each sentence should function as one of these four types of, um, of uh, items, of categories, right? Four different ways of functioning in a De fully developed paragraph. All right, so are there any questions, guys, about, about paragraph development, about what we're doing today in terms of developing your own paragraph on your own topic related to progress? Okay, guys, if there are no more questions, I'll go ahead and mute my mic. I'll continue looking at your progress. Make sure you're working in your wiki. Make sure that you have headings that are as they are listed here. So we should need we need a heading for title, a heading for context, measurements, references, evidence, and then we need a sixth one for your paragraph. Just call it paragraph and then write out your paragraph just below your heading called paragraph. All right, so guys, just jump in, unmute your microphone if you have any questions or you want me to look at something. All right, guys, we're getting close to uh, the end of today's class. What we need to try to complete for today is your paragraph. This is our second day on the paragraph. Remember to include the different types of sentences that we talked about today, the main idea, the evidence sentences, the analysis sentences, and a summarizing sentence in your paragraph. Try to complete it for the next class. Tomorrow, Thursday, we're going to review our paragraphs and make final changes. We're going to I'll leave feedback. We'll look at different aspects of your paragraphs. And on Friday, our last class, we're going to uh, read our, our uh, paragraphs in the during the live session. So make sure by Friday that you have an active microphone. If you have a cell phone, usually that will be enough, right? You don't uh, need to activate the video if you don't want to. You're going to be encouraged to do so if you wish, but make sure that you at least have a microphone active on Friday in order to read aloud your, your paragraph. We'll go one by one and uh, read each of our paragraphs uh, in the live session on Friday. But tomorrow I want to spend reviewing and modifying your text. So try to finish for tomorrow. If you don't finish for tomorrow, then we, we, we won't have a chance to make final changes for the final reading of your paragraph on Friday. All right, are there any questions about what we talked about today in terms of developing the paragraph using or considering these four different types of sentences? All right, so I guess then we'll go ahead and conclude for today. And again, tomorrow we'll pick up this activity. I make sure that your finished paragraph is in the wiki. I'll be 
getting information from the wiki and for tomorrow's activity where we'll go in and make final changes to your text. All right, thanks guys. Enjoy the rest of your day and we'll talk to you tomorrow. See you, thank you.